Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we welcome back an old friend of the channel. I think it's the fourth time Benny's been on, back in the Komodo days and then through to Red Fox. Yeah. Uh, it's been six months since we did that catch up and plenty of you have become fans and followers of the project and Benny, but uh, welcome back Benny. I guess today we want to go over everything you guys have been up to, so there's been plenty. But yeah, thanks very much for having us back after yeah six months. It feels like a lifetime and so much has changed. So really keen to uh, catch everybody up on what's happening. So for those that haven't followed along, um, I guess today will be pretty casual. Um, yep. When we first caught up with Red Fox, it was when they just started and that was two mm. and a half years ago, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then the most recent catch up when I hadn't really followed the progress much for those two years was in August last year, so about six months ago. And there was lots of cool stuff happening but the project was pretty niche hidden underground wasn't on any big exchanges hadn't spent any you know marketing and that type of thing but everything that they were doing all the pieces were there for a very cool project a little hidden gem so since then it's uh it's grown there's been so much happening partnerships uh, products that's all happening so i guess benny do you want to run people through maybe the different arms of what red fox does because i yeah. think there's still a lot of confusion if people go oh red fox it does nfts and that's yeah it. sure yeah sure so uh, that's a very good point i mean actually the other day someone i don't know who it was but someone from our audience uh, talk, was talking to a, a, a big channel and they said, who should we talk to next? And the person said, Red Fox Labs. And the guy apparently brought up the website and said, oh, we don't interview DAOs. Um, so uh, that's also our fault. We've got to make sure that we get the message out and make it a little bit cleaner. But ultimately, as, as I've said, if you think of uh, Google, Google's parent company is Alphabet. Nobody knows who Alphabet is. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, it, Red Fox needs to has been the top company and everybody knows what Red Fox Labs uh, was well, starting to know what Red Fox Labs is, but it needs to be that they understand the arms underneath of it. So others that do a little bit of research say, oh, they're a gaming project. They should be in an NFT index. And we are now in, in a lot of those NFT indexes. But the thing is that that's just one business. So much the same as a rocket internet would work or an Alibaba or Tencent, we have multiple companies under one umbrella. But the difference is we build those companies uh, from from within. We do acquire companies or skills from outside that complement what we're doing. The f it just happened to be that when we talked last time, we were just going out and releasing our first NFT collection, which has done over $2 million worth of sales now. It's number one on Wax, which is very humbling. Um, and the game is 100% on-chain mobile. It's in closed beta. So it's the first one to be every single move function feature on mobile, on blockchain. So that's, uh, that's progressing nicely in closed beta. And we're actually just going to announce uh, in the next couple of days, we've brought on um, a GM who is a guru in the gaming world. And that's our model. Our model is to design, to build, to start the operation, and then to transfer it to people that are far more skilled than I and we are in running those ventures. So this guy will be able to bring in partnerships, deals, funding, um, much better ideas and, and work with Arc Lega to really sort of build this, this out to be a monster. Yeah. But that's one project. So I was going to say, just for people at home, uh, mm. an incubator, a startup accelerator in a few different, I guess, areas of focus, like we've just already touched on NFTs and gaming, but then we'll get into some other things as well. So when you hear about mm. all these different parts going on, that's why, because it's literally that business model of getting in early stage ideas or mm. projects and picking up the pieces, getting the right people in place just you know, accelerating them, help them grow, uh, funding side of things as well, I think we'll get into, Benny. But that's mm -hmm. kind of the idea and the business model here uh, with a focus on, I guess, blockchain and those sort of digital peer-to-peer -peer, specialties. Yeah, no, you, you, that's exactly right. So what we do is we've got the DBOP model, so we design it. We've got a nine-point funnel system, so we don't just sit around and say, hey, that project would be cool. has to get through our funnel, and so... Quite honestly, sometimes we're disappointed because the ones we want don't come through and don't meet the criteria. Others come through, but we know that if it's come through the bottom of the funnel, it's going to be a good uh, business and a high chance of success. But the, the trick with a venture builder is you need the first one to get up and running because that feeds the subsequent and consequent ventures as well because now you've got an audience. If I tried to start up 10 different companies, I have to go through 10 different Twitter accounts, for example, and get 10 different audiences and 10 different things, whereas we stick to the four fastest growing sectors of the internet economy. So all of our stuff is to e-media, e-commerce, e-travel, and then the ride-hailing logistics side of things as well. So gaming fits under e-media. So um, 
we we definitely do that design stage, the build stage. We get it to MVP. We make sure it's got product market fit. And once we work out it has, we say go. Now we've got a we're on to something. We need to now go out. Now two things uh, about that. First thing, like you say, people might say um, uh, maybe you're just one company or one style of company or you do one thing. We have to make sure that that gets up and running and going first, and that it's got that product market fit before we say. Okay, now we sink significant um, investment into it. We get uh, heavy hitters in to make sure that it takes off. That's why we didn't do a lot of the marketing and stuff. We need to understand that the product as a standalone has appeal and it's not just hype based. It has to be done organically in the right way. So we had to, we, we carefully chose that. Second thing is now that we start to announce, okay, we're bringing out X and we're bringing out Y and we're bringing out Z for our new companies, people will automatically say, I thought they were a gaming company. What happened to the game? Are they not concentrating on that anymore? They're moving on to other things because we're in a bull market or whatever. But that's purely because people don't understand that the DBOP model means that we transfer over once it's up and going and running. We still oversee it every day. We have weekly and monthly reports and daily meetings with the, the people that will be running it. But And we're, we've got a vested interest, obviously. We own it. So uh, that's our baby. We have to make sure these guys do a really good job. But... The, the most important part to, to know is we don't move on to something else unless we've got the right people in place. Just because we haven't gone out and announced everybody, you need to make sure that you've got the right people in and you need to make sure it's stable and you need to make sure that they're the right fit for the role. You don't just go out and say, oh, we hired six people so we could move on to the next thing. It's not like that. Um, um, so it's, it's, carefully, uh, it's carefully planned. I guess the other question in the crypto economy becomes, uh, how do you integrate these businesses to all uh, utilize RFOX? Because a lot of investors mm-hmm. will say, um, you know, are we investing in equity and staking uh, mm-hmm. share ownership in the company? Or how do we know that we're getting value? And is the token used in different ways for these different um, companies sure. and projects and protocols? So how does that all mm-hmm. sort of tie into it? Yeah, sure. So we've always said that we uh, want RFOX to be the token that underpins the whole economy and the whole structure. So we made no bones about it. We wanted to be like a super dap. And um, the reason we didn't go and shout that out from the rooftops in the beginning is because you say, I've got nothing and we want to be a super dap. And people turn around and say, righto. Um, mm. I've heard this before and we've seen all these types of unicorn promises and all the rest of it. So the, the, the most important thing is to get a business up, show that you can do it. Uh, which most people cannot. And um, we've been fortunate enough to get the first one through the gates and now it's become a lot easier. So um, now we can turn around and start saying, now we're going to show you how it fits together. So take, for example, your question. Now that you've got uh, a a media arm that we're bringing in, which we'll talk about, but we've got a media arm and we've got other companies and we've got audiences and we've got traction, we look at plugging in RFOX into all of that. Now, if it's not the surface level currency for transactions, so for example, if someone goes along and buys NBA top shots with a credit card, there's still crypto that's on the underneath, right? So RFOX would be underneath of everything and and power the transactions for absolutely everything. So all things go through RFOX. So anything that we integrate, establish, build, and if it's a straight transaction like an advertiser pays us $10,000 to use our advertising and marketing platform, we'd buy back a percentage of that. We'd take the revenue, buy back RFOX and distribute that to holders. So there's always going to be a... um, a mechanism for RFOX. It has to, everything has to go through RFOX. And with the blockchain side of things, uh, originally you're on Komodo, you touched on mm-hmm. Wax for the NFTs and with the game, you can have everything on chain because it is one of those faster, more centralized chains. Mm-hmm. But you guys made the move to Ethereum um, to yeah. be part of that sort of ecosystem where you have the DeFi's of the world and all that. So yep. how's that sort of working out? You know, the bridges, is that all going to plan yeah. at the moment? Yeah, it's been a great. Uh, it's been great. As you say, we started off on Komodo. It was um, uh, renowned for being um, very good technology and all the rest of it. But we, as a team that were not overly technical, we needed access to tools and we needed access to applications and we needed access to audiences. That's the most important thing. We build businesses and we try and build user-friendly, good customer experience businesses. And we couldn't um, we couldn't get the support that we need uh, because we can't build the tools and there's no tools to use. So the, the move to Ethereum was much more for the network effect. And then what we've said, we've and we wanted this from day one, our end goal is to make it so that the end user doesn't even know that they're interacting with blockchain at all. That becomes a, second, a secondary uh, thing uh, and more of a, a selling point or an added value. 
Um, so what we think 100% is that we are moving towards being agnostic and therefore we'll go to any chain that provides us with the best tools and the best equipment to be able to service the companies and platforms that we're building. So, so far we haven't had any problems. We know that there's a lot of um, issues with gas prices and stuff at the moment, but there's so many people out there that are working on bridges and it's becoming relatively easy for us to be able to work with any of these uh these either second second layer or external blockchains yeah i definitely think uh like polka dot has made a lot of progress and there's now projects mm. that allow you to run your like ethereum dap on polka dot um like secret mm. network is one we've covered a lot that have got a bridge going now so you're starting to see these little bridges and interoperability yep. protocols pop up everywhere um Anything else to add there, Benny, like challenges you found with the the tokenomics of being on multiple chains or is it, you know, a good thing? I think you're already looking at doing the NFTs on Rootstock on Bitcoin. Is that still all happening? Yeah, we can do. We've got so many options. It's a, it's a blessing, actually. We're very, as I say, very humbled by it. We've got so many options now and so many um, requests that it's a matter of trying to balance what fits into our overall objectives the best. So uh, 100% that can still go ahead. Uh, we've also got, um, as you know, we've got the NFTs on the WAX and the EOS IO implementation for the game, but we've also got something else coming up which actually gives us extra utility uh, where we'll be working with another chain um, very, very soon. And that will actually be very exciting for the RFOX holders because it will give uh, not only value but utility to the to the token in a way that hasn't quite been done before. Yeah, cool. I'm just trying to think of like an example, a real world example of, of uh, for people at home. Um, we've seen it with some other companies and protocols where like the the ways you can scale. So you can either sort of trust the game or the company because not everything needs the whole security of the whole Ethereum blockchain, for example. So Mm. if you have like a lightning network with the NFTs on it, well, you kind of got to put your trust in that node that might be a gaming company. So there's, you know, there's always those different trade-offs. We spoke about this a lot with Gods Unchained. Um, they're mm-hmm. coming out with that immutable scaling technology, which is probably the leader for NFT project on Ethereum. So I think that's one that you guys that's have good. looked into as well. But there's... Yeah, yeah. We've spoken to the guys there. They're doing some amazing stuff and we're still in talks with those guys as well. Um, we're talking to a lot of different people, but uh, the thing that's the thing that's really good is that um, to give you the example as well is like we've got a virtual space coming up that we've talked about before. The virtual space is kind of like a uh, think of it like a uh, a shopping mall in Australian terms. Um, so you've got the you'll have ownership in the in the mall, which is called the land, and that land uh, will yield a, a dividend for you, which is two percent of all transactions that happen within. And then you've got shops, so people come along and buy a shop inside, which is like your store. And then um, to to put what you're saying before into context. This doesn't need to be on blockchain. There's no there's no value or benefit of putting that much information and that much stuff on on chain. It'll be built by a top flight third a three D uh, world creator. Then what happens is we integrate the payment layer and systems in, which is the blockchain side, to be able to sell the NFTs and the digital and virtual items. And you can pay in twenty one fiat currencies and one hundred and thirty or forty um, blockchain. Uh, cryptocurrencies and you can also use fiat and um, credit I mean credit card and all the rest of it but the thing that we want to try and do is make it so that the end user doesn't have to think about hang on do I have to have the token of this company or do I have to have a wallet on this chain we're trying to remove all of that ambiguity as quickly as we can and um, to do that if we build on one blockchain for a virtual space it doesn't make any sense but if we build a virtual space that plugs into all of the blockchains much more sense but how does that affect or impact RFOX and what challenges does that provide? It just means that everything goes through RFOX on a second layer. So, for example, I pay in Bitcoin, it goes through RFOX to settlement uh, and vice versa. And the people at the end don't have to be any the wiser um, as far as uh, what the process behind the scenes is. I pay on a credit card. I don't need to understand how my how my money gets to from my credit card to the to the retailer and into their bank account and pays for the, their kids' school and for, I don't it doesn't I don't care I just want to pay the money and get get my item and that's it. Yeah, I think um, that's probably a challenge that still hasn't been solved. Like you think about MetaMask, it's the most used like interface 
or built-in mm-hmm. wallet in the crypto world, and it's not that great. It's still not that user-friendly. So I think it's out there. Yeah. Someone could do a better job. MetaMask have started to add a little swap feature. I'm not sure if you've seen this, and they take a yeah, little part of the fees, and their revenue yeah. is already skyrocketing. So if someone builds a really good wallet, uh, Binance Smart yeah. Chain have already integrated into MetaMask. So where we're going to get to is this point where you'll just click Polkadot or you know, yeah. Cosmos or Ethereum and you'll change yeah. what blockchain yeah. you're on or hopefully you won't even have to pick. You won't even have to know which one you're on and it'll just all be integrated yeah. uh, for the user to use all these different dApps, this new Web3 that we're building. As Benny said, That's how it should be. Yeah, you'll go into the virtual world and you'll do virtual shopping uh, yeah. on the rewards and shopping app that we might talk about next. Yeah. You pick, pick your shoes or you pick your dinner and Uber Eats yeah. will deliver it to you in the real world while well, you'll walk yep. around a virtual food court, for example. So all these things exactly. are possible when we're melding the two worlds together. Exactly. So we're just trying to make it a bit easier for people. And um, the virtual space, for for all intent and purpose, is just a, a nicer way to shop. It's a nicer retail experience. And you can, it's kind of cool to be able to cruise around in a virtual space and have, um, you know, the gaming the gaming quarter be nighttime and the and an art quarter be daytime and look like a uh, Fontana de Trevi and have uh, birds. And it, it's kind of cool to have different themes in the different quarters. But ultimately, the last thing you want to have to be thinking is, oh, am I able to actually buy anything here? Because I've only got BNB tokens and I, I need to use ETH. I mean, this is just a ridiculous situation. So yeah. we're trying to move to the, the whole, we're not saying that we can solve the problem. We're not saying we're going to come up with a new trust wallet or something like that. What we're saying is we provide the platform that allows all of the chains to come and integrate their technology too. So we want to be the providers and the uh, the people that provide you with the opportunity to build, create and earn not the people that are trying to solve the technical problems. That's not what we're good at. It's not what we do. A bit like how anyone can create a Bitcoin wallet or you know Ethereum wallet or DAP. It's all sort of you know open for everyone to come and uh, join. So um, the next thing I was going to say, yeah, that rewards and cashback app. So there's a lot yeah. of them out there that are sort of integrating crypto in one way or another. Um, yeah. How are you onboarding the businesses and the users? And you've had that acquisition recently. I'd, I'm not sure if there's another yeah. one, what you're allowed to talk about and whatnot, but yeah. what's that side of things all looking like? Yeah, so, so my background um, in customer experience and turnarounds has been very heavily involved with uh, cashback and rewards. And, and if I was to do a cashback and rewards app, people would say, well, that's what you know. That's where the money is. Money's where you know what you, what you know and all the rest of it. But cashback and rewards apps have been done to death and uh, there's a, there is a lot of them out there. Like you say, the competition is very high. We're actually doing it as a streaming uh, e-commerce platform, which is a uh, phenomenon in Asia, $63 billion business just in China. And that's basically, you get these uh, often young, very good looking uh, influencer types that stand up and uh, try on t-shirts and shirts and they show stuff and they and you can interact with them. So you also, you can actually, um, you know, write a message and say, how much does that cost? And they read it and say, oh, it costs blah, blah. These guys get like hundreds of thousands of viewers in one at one time once they get their uh, influencer status up. And as I was saying, the top two influencers on Hearts Day, which is a big shopping day in China, do $400 million in revenue between two of them, which is like equivalent to 10 Macy's stores in a whole year in the States. It's like mind-blowing stuff. So what um, we're I, doing is providing the... I was just going to say that's um, very similar. Like we've just done a lot of this in Decentraland. So we've integrated all mm-hmm. our like tutorials and that. And then we've got AI nuggets yeah. that are walking around that you'll be able to talk to and ask questions. And so sounds like this is very similar. And I think we'll even be able to like integrate with each other. Um, but yeah, yeah, sure. So this will be like a, a, a famous girl, for example, um, that, that, that stands up and talks about a particular type of clothing. You can then ask questions. They answer them and you can order and there's AI uh a chatbot integration already done that'll confirm the delivery the order all the rest of it and deliver it to your house in a couple of hours but where we've put the cash back and element spin is we actually say everything that you buy through our platform you'll get a seven or eight percent cash back uh as a result of having done that so that's all powered by and helps the rfox economy as well but you can use that in any of the platforms that we're partnered with so we're already an affiliate of lazada in uh, vietnam uh, which is kind of like the amazon of this region so that's all been signed off and done so um, what we do is we actually uh, make it so that that will go across everything that we do. So a little hint or nugget, pardon the pun, um, is uh, is that uh, we'll be implementing that across our NFTs and stuff as well. Uh, there'll be the cashback across everything. But uh, the, the main selling point is the streaming 
um, commerce app, meaning that these grey market businesses like your Facebook businesses and these businesses that have uh, lost their stores during COVID and all the rest of it will now have a platform to be able to interact with large audiences, sell live, have questions answered live and be able to buy on demand, have those deliveries done very quickly and effectively within Southeast Asia. And this isn't something that we're planning. This has been, been being built for more than 18 months. It's finished. What we didn't have was the audience and we didn't have the people that could actually run it because we need to find people that our DBOP model to hand over. Mm -hmm. So the acquisition of the media platform in Myanmar gave us everything that we needed. Now we've got 13 million followers in Myanmar. We've now got a, a, a huge roster of blue chip clients. We've now got an eager audience that we can push this to. So this has a, uh, a very high chance of being very successful straight away. And then once we've got it up, launched in Myanmar and we've got the bugs and the kinks out, off we go to Philippines and Indonesia and the rest. So it hasn't it hasn't really taken off in Australia that much. I'm not sure, no. even sure about the America or Europe. No, it hasn't which either. Where the most of our viewers are. So you might have seen like Instagram uh, the last few years, influencers can put in, you know, the sneakers that they're wearing or the T-shirt and you can click on it and buy it directly and it's all starting to be integrated. So this is a, the same concept where it's just so hot and trending right now for people to do mm -hmm. kind of like their TikToks you can think of it as or whatever it is. So it's live streaming with things being sort of shield or advertised, marketed, yeah, yeah. whatever you want to think of it as. And this is all the way through the spectrum of kids that are just gaming and streaming and playing through to the professional yeah. companies like your Samsungs and your Nikes actually trying to sell people products. And then you get into the targeted marketing and start a bidding war for who wants whose attention. Um, this is kind Correct. of where it's all going. And I just don't think we've been exposed to it that much in Australia yet. No, and we've been talking to the um, Galaxy Digital team and to the and to some of the other people that are looking at investing in us, and, and they are all saying it's not big in their part of the world yet, but they know it's going to be massive in the next couple of years. And Asia's really the part that the part of the world that everybody's looking at to say, let's see how this works, because they're so they they they've kind of a lot of these countries have skipped the normal telephone type of calls that we had when we were young and growing up showing our age um, to straight into a smartphone with uh, digital content and these guys are switched on they're plugged in and COVID has expediated this process to the point that people can't go to shopping centres and malls anymore so they find a person they trust an influencer they trust that comes out and says this is a good quality t-shirt this is what it looks like on me rah 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 and these people say right how can I get that now to the fact that we're actually uh, introducing an element that says buy it but you'll also get seven or eight percent back and you can use that across doesn't have to be so i can buy from lazada and i can go to a facebook store and use my money at the facebook store to, to cash in my reward but the great part about it is we also have a referral element which means that if you uh, bring anybody into the platform you'll get like one percent of their uh, so they'll get seven and you'll get um one for the whole entire time that they're actually uh, on that platform and buying so We've got teams in the Philippines that are already looking to fly to Vietnam when we set it up, go around and recruit all of the people, then fly back to the Philippines, and that's what they do. That's how they make their living. So they sign people up for these things. So we've got all the right people in places. We just were missing the audience and we we're missing blue chip clients, um, which are impossible to get. So we bought them. Yeah, that's 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 very very interesting. I haven't really thought too much about like affiliate systems for that uh, style of marketing, but you can see how it become very popular particularly in the you know, developing regions. Um, we've spoken about Incent. People, uh, members in the group will have heard me speak about that little app and it has uh, like these codes you scan to get people's attention. Um, and the little rewards that might be like two US cents a day or that 1% referral program, you know, that could be a lot of money for people in some of these countries compared to, again, Massive. Aussies or US people saying, why would I go to the effort to do something for the two cents? You know, people are mm -hmm. getting used to these airdrops that are worth thousands of dollars these days. But um, yeah. no, I, I think it's a powerful business model that's just ripe to take off in Southeast Asia now that it's going, you know, mobile and better internet. Um, they've all got their devices and, and that. Well, they take a long time to build and the, the hook that we've got is we've also got the cash back and rewards, but they take a, a long time to build. So we've actually got big, big um, in companies in Vietnam and the region that have rung us and said, geez, you saw this coming before we did. You've got the head start. You've got the app. How about we team up or we, we buy it off you before you've even started? And we're sort of saying no. And when we speak to potential investors, they 
go through and say, what have you got? And we say NFTs and they go, yeah, they're huge. That's good. That's that's good. What other business have you got? And then when we get to this one, this is where everybody sort of stops and says, this is your, this is the one that's going to uh, go berserk. Because if we get it right in Asia and everybody is watching how it's done in Asia, you, you do the sums, they either want yours over there or they want to buy you and, um, and and take that over there. So it's just it's just a massive opportunity for Red Fox. It's great for the R Fox holders and it's good for everybody involved. This is this is a very very exciting one for us. Cool. So we've touched on uh, NFTs. You guys have seen the Cogs, mm -hmm. uh, the the game that's all on chain on, on Wax. In the future, there'll be more games, and you know we want mm -hmm. people to be able to design their own with all those like tools and plugins and APIs and that that we sort of mentioned in previous episodes as well. Uh, I think the next one that's coming is like the branded things. So people have mm -hmm. already seen like um, what is it? NBA Top Shots has gone absolutely yeah, berserk yeah. on uh, yeah. is it Flow blockchain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, they're similar things that you guys could do or are looking to do in other brands yeah. or whatever as well. That's on the to do list. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what we've said is we've got a couple of big weeks of announcements and stuff coming up. So uh, all I can say is that, that one of the things that we're going to be talking about is directly related to that. But let's just say that we've had no shortage of interest from um, big IPs. Uh, this is a, a, I think Dapper and Flow have sort of shown what's possible and got people's interest peaked. And now there are others that sort of... Uh, uh, everybody's looking at this space right now and um, thankfully we've put ourselves in a position where people are talking to us so there's lots of things you have to work out with legalities and rights and all the rest of it especially when you get into music and those types of sections they become a lot harder but ultimately speaking um, we've got some some we've got some good news on that in the next few weeks. Yeah, I think Mark Cuban as well, he's been doing the rounds on Twitter and he did a good podcast the other day. Mm -hmm. um, when you hear an investor like him talking about um, when he used OpenSea or Rarible and you can build in 10% um, you know, that you get commission if it's sold each time and he's mm -hmm. saying, well, there you go, that solves all my scalping ticket worries for my you know, my team. And just all these one mm -hmm. by one, he just talking about these little things that you can do that you can't do with other technologies. Then this this isn't just replicating 100%. baseball cards as collectibles. It is bringing 100%. new concepts to the table. And uh, these people are starting to see the power of it. Um, and you go to these big, these big brands or these big influencers or whatever it is and you say, you know, I give you a way to connect with your audience on a more personal level level direct level and it's better for you because you can yeah. get paid directly it's just opening up all these avenues yeah we've actually uh, you, you might have seen mike novogratz spoke to gary v the other day and gary v's become instantly uh very interested in nft so yes. i tweeted back to his last uh, request he's trying to swap cases of wine for nfts and we sort of did a little thing where we said if you you take our nfts then you can keep it but you've got to sell the wine for charity uh, and then I've reached out to Mike and asked Mike to give him a nudge and um, tell him to take the deal. So hopefully we can get some uh, NFTs in Gary's hands. But Gary V, that type of that just goes to show you that people from well outside the space that have nothing to do with it are starting to see the value in it, and they're providing something that's big to them in wine. Uh, that's what he knows, and he's trying to get he's trying to swap that for something that he thinks is equally as valuable. So this is just great uh, testimony for what's to come for NFTs. But we have ideas well beyond just branded IP, uh, there's there's actual uh, there's actually much stronger use cases for NFTs that we think are coming in very, very quickly and we're trying to make sure that we're there for it ready. Yeah, so for those that don't know, Gary V, very famous marketer who turned his dad's little wine shop into like his online business. And so we talk about tracking and traceability with blockchains, but if you actually do it as an mm. NFT, you can make each even bottle of um, wine uh, like individual characteristics compared to just having like ERC-20 tokens where they're all just wine. Um, so people are starting to, yeah, reinvent these. Well, is it better as an NFT versus a utility token? What can I do with this, that, or the other? Um, I, just, I just, yeah, the mind boggles at all these different things that are going to be changed by crypto in general. And it's just starting to tick along. Like NFTs gave it a nudge. De DeFi was a massive wave, but then... NFTs have given things another nudge, I think, in other industries. Yeah, and I think um, 
I think NFTs, like you say, it's got a lot of room to go. They've only just started. And I don't think, just like the beginning of the internet, we thought it was for emails. We're not really sure what NFTs are going to be used for yet. They're much more powerful than people think they are. They're not just for advertising artwork. But we firmly believe that the next wave, 100%, is going to be um, blockchain will change the, the e-commerce and retail side of uh, the way people interact and uh, and the value and it's it's becoming safer to do peer to peer transactions now. That's what the whole one of the main um, things with the with the blockchain is. So we've got some very clever ideas to try and combine all of these things together, and that's part of forming a super DAP. I mean, if you buy a marketing and advertising platform, then you want to be able to advertise through your things. We have billboards in the back of our video game. We have uh, cash back and rewards that we can put into our game. We can put into our cash back app we can put into um, the uh, virtual space so we we 100 percent automatically no matter what we launch in the future we're feeding it with a, a ton of clients and a, and a system that allows people to to easily either one visit one platform or to be part of all platforms depending on what they're what they're interested in yeah like you said before people might buy like a virtual plot of, plot of land like we see into central land but it might be for a store that they like, and then you might be able to get a percentage of revenue or foot traffic, yes. or just you can you can just customize any aspect of this that you want because it's digital. Is there any other arms of the business we haven't touched on yet for people at home? They're they're the they're the main ones. Um, there's a few surprises that we've got coming up in the next week as well. But we always have talked about uh, one of the background projects that uh, that won't get much fanfare, especially in the beginning, uh, depending on who we partner with to do it. Uh, is a uh, statista.com type of um, uh, business, which is a basically a data storage and analytics. They run like uh, 50 different uh, businesses, uh, sorry, 600 business types across 50 countries, and they, that's where you go to to buy data. Uh, we, we know how valuable data is, so data will be one of our big things going forwards because we need the data to be able to work out which businesses to start, what's going to be the most successful, and... and um, that's a project that I'm extremely passionate about, but that takes a long time to build in the background. Is this something like the graph that, or our weave uh, that we're seeing, like querying? It's and- it's a combination of those, but um, ultimately it's more sort of a straight traditional sort of um, uh, gather data on the particular industry types that allow you to be able to make informed decisions. So you normally what you do as a business is you buy industry reports and you have like the Google Tamaset reports that come out and tell you the industry growth, sector growth, oh, which yeah. we, we rely on heavily and most businesses do. So what we're doing is effectively allowing that to happen and you can do that with a, an Oracle type setup as well. So instead of these companies, the reason there's not more of them is the data storage is, a, is an absolute killer. Um, there's clever ways you can combine existing models um, like I, to, to I, work People are co- using IPFS with Chainlink yeah. and all that sort of stuff yeah. starting to happen. Yeah. yeah, and you can use CockroachDB with a with an Oracle provider, and obviously we've got a we've got a few negotiations going with um, Link and a um, few others, so that we've got uh, we've got some options here. So this is um, the good part about it is we just want to do one thing at a time, make sure it all clicks together and it feeds into the whole ecosystem. And I think we're on the right track. So now we've got the first one away, we've got the second one. Now we've got an audience, uh, which is rare for crypto. Uh, and an actual user base and revenue and profitability. Um, now it's a matter of putting the pedal down and, and building out the system and the structure as fast as we can. But we've gone from, um, in our first talk to you six months ago, we were sort of, you know, as I say, we knew exactly what we were going to do, but we appeared to be sitting in the pa- sand pit with a plastic shovel and asking for <laughs> mum to come and put more water in the sand pit. Now it's uh, now the, the vision started to be realised. Uh, people are starting to see, oh, this is what they were doing all that time and now it's clicking together. But none of this stuff happens overnight. This has been yeah, years so of hard work. One other question I had or I've even been asked by some people is uh, if they're mm-hmm. like a content creator or even if they've got a project yeah. or a game they want to start, uh, yeah. is there a, a way to do... Uh, like raising using the RFOX token or like using RFOX yeah. to to mint an NFT to give it more value? Like is there anything on the yeah. roadmap? Yes. Uh, 
Uh, within three weeks, we'll have an answer to that question in, a, in no uncertain terms. Okay. But yes, it is. Uh, the, the whole world that we're building um, and the metaverse and the ecosystem that we're building is 100% about content creators and providers coming in. Yeah. So don't think of us like an apple that builds out 10 different products and they're ring fenced. Think of us like a Roblox who builds something that a participative uh, platform or ecosystem that you can come into, contribute to, build, add your technical prowess. So we've even talked about, um, we're even talking to a few of the chains now that want to link into some of the stuff that we're about to announce we're doing. And what they've said is, how does that benefit us? And we've sort of said, what do you mean? All your users come across, but if you're the one setting up the pathway or the, or the road, you can charge the toll. Uh, that's fine. So they're saying, wow, this is, we can actually make money not being the actual providers of the the end platform and experience but the the tunnels or the the tracks in and i said of course this is a very possible so now that's created more conversations than we could possibly keep up with but we know we're on the right track now and we are um uh, these little pieces of news like yesterday uh will will show that we've put all the pieces in play and i think we're about four or five weeks away from sort of uh, people being able to click together exactly what it is that we've done and what we're doing, and I think that'll be the penny drop aha moment for a lot of people. Yeah, and I th- like I'm, I'm just spitballing ideas of things that I've seen uh, like other projects do, or what I would do, or just where I think the virtual space is going in general. So, mm. I mean, yeah, the sky's the limit. It's like you're spot on the money, mate. What business models do you want to disrupt and, and start? So yeah. that's kind of the way the world's going. Um, Anything else? You're 100% spot on, mate. You're 100% spot on. <laughs> uh, yeah, the last thing I'd say in relation to all of this is the world needs to, the world's changed um, hugely. A lot of people are still trying to sell the same old narratives, but the fact is the world is probably less connected. It needs to be more connected. Uh, the digital world got a, a full maximum capacity testing, didn't it, to see whether it could handle all of these people trying to be online and, and connected at the same time. We worked out what works and what doesn't work. Mm. Uh, but most importantly, people are starting to realise that they need to be able to have more freedom to be able to create revenue for themselves from what they're good at. And uh, what we're trying to do is provide platforms for developers, users to come in and, and not only contribute to but get rewarded. It shouldn't be that you go to YouTube and they make all the money. It should be that you go to YouTube and you build your channel and you get a good, a decent uh, cut of that revenue that's coming through and you you create your audience and you own it. Yeah, that censorship resistance. Um, I mean, literally just today, Facebook have pulled down like all i think it's even like the nuggets news page like anything that's to do with news or sharing articles like all these posts from years of content have been removed for like so many australian businesses i can't even imagine um and then you look at so what we're doing is we're saying we're going to stop that we're going to make sure that in a few weeks we're going to start providing solutions where that doesn't happen anymore because we uh, we realize we can't build a sustainable business if we're relying on third party um, technologies that can just change the rules and conditions on us and change who we can talk to. So that's something that we're extremely passionate about changing. Yes, and that is the whole Web3 that I've been talking about for a mm. long time now. So I hope people really starting to understand that it's got to be everything from the hardware, the infrastructure, the internet it runs on through to the you know the software, the apps and everything. All that's got to be unstoppable. So the government or the CEO or someone that doesn't like your political opinion can't just come in and red stamp you or delete all the your posts you've ever shared and all your contents you know gone from YouTube or whatever it is. So yes, um, great chat, Benny. Any, anything else to finish on? I guess we'll catch up again in future. Yep. Um, sounds like there's a fair bit in the next few weeks. So follow yep. those links down below. Yeah, just wanted to say again. Uh, I say it every time. Congratulations to you as well. You're building a bigger audience every time we talk, and you've. Uh, build a reputation as being the, the trusted uh, news source, not only from your region, but a lot of other regions rely on you guys for the news as well. So keep up the good work. And we're always very honoured to be able to uh, to come back and chat to you again. So thank you very much for the service that you provide to everybody. Cheers. We might be able to crack into an Asian audience and followers now on some of these uh, media companies that you guys have acquired. So awesome as always, Benny. Yeah, I hope platform. you guys have enjoyed that one down at home and we'll talk again soon. Cheers. Thank you.